Dave Ingebretson, and once again, Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying the Angler's Art. And as usual, we've got three varied flies for you tonight. We're going to start out with uh, kind of a Western standard, the, the uh, grizzly wolf, mm -hmm. and then a very creative version of the Mickey Finn. It's called a soft tackle Mickey Finn streamer. And uh, this was a new one to me, and I think it's going to be a, a pretty attractive fly for you. Kind of, Interesting yes. fly. Should be a good one uh, for the action and mm -hmm. the, the color. And we're going to finish up with a panfish fly, the uh, Palmer Gnat. Palmer Gnat. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the Okay, grizzly, grizzly wolf. wolf. Standard wolf pattern. I'll use a 8-aught uh, rusty brown tying thread. The wing will be tied with uh, brown calf tail. Now you could also use elk hair for this if you'd like. The tail will be a black moose body here. The body, yellow poly yarn, polypropylene yarn. And then the hackle is just the grizzly and brown mixed together. <clears throat> I have a size tw uh, 10 hook. And I'll mash the barb down on it. And in the vise we go, except the vise isn't adjusted quite right. Then we'll dress this t shank up front only to start with because I'm going to tie in just that wing to get a good location on it. Calf tail is, uh, it's not the easiest material in the world to work with for wings. It, uh, it's a little difficult to stack, but it does give a good coloration. It's similar to elk, and sometimes I'll use elk mane on it rather than this calf tail. But one one thing you have to do is clean out the short Got to get fur. that under fur out. Have yeah. to. And I'll see if this will even up enough to do us any good. That's not bad. That's not bad. Then I want it about the length of the shank of the hook. So I'll lay it up here and get a measurement. And then I'm going to cinch it down. Now I'm going to go forward just slightly to make sure it's all bound. And I'll trim this off at an angle. Now with the body material that I'm putting on, it isn't all that necessary because it's not going to be a real thin body. I'm going to also coat those butts with this rubber-based glue. Now let's tell them about that rubber-based glue. This is something you've made yourself. Mm -hmm. You get that real heavy tube of... Uh, Oh, the shoe repair stuff. Rubber you, glue. Rubber glue yeah. that you put on tennis shoes, things mm -hmm. like that. And then you thin it with toluene. Mm -hmm. Or I found that a good thinner is uh, called, I think it's called Kotal. It's stuff that you thin oh, really? seam sealer with. Oh. And I buy mine in a place that sells neoprene and uh, mm -hmm. cake kayaking things. And uh, All I've ever used is the toluene. Yeah, well, I, it, it's hard to find toluene, and then you got to buy a gallon of it or oh, whatever. Oh, well, yeah. So and this stuff you can buy in a little bottle, and it lasts a long, long time. Now this, I've measured the tail out. It's going to be, again, about the length of the shank. Just lay those butt to butt. Now the tail and the wing fibers are right next to each other to make a smoother body. Then for the polypropylene, just take one strand. This cuff's... Uh, comes in, strand, in a, a single rope with three strands. You don't need all three of those. In fact, if you're tying a smaller fly, uh, and a lot of times you'll even have to take the one strand and split it up. It's too thick. Get it bound down and just wrap that forward. Now that's interesting. You haven't stood the wings up yet. No. I, I do it either way. Sometimes I will before I wrap the body. It... Uh, you know, I thought about that when I got back to where the tail was, but either one of them will, will work fine. Now I'll stand the wing up. I want to wrap in front of it to get it to stand in the air. Then I'm going to divide it, and this is always the tricky part. How do you know how many fibers for sure you're getting on each side? Just get it as even as you can. I'm going to figure eight it a couple of times, and then I'm going to go around each wing post it just makes it a little bit tighter together, makes the wing look a little more finished. Plus, it'll be a whole lot more durable. Now, there's the wing, upright and divided. 
Now that it has a grizzly and brown mix, I'll grab a grizzly, doesn't matter which one you wrap first. I've seen guys wrap these together. Well, I've and seen I have a each terrible variation, time with but that. It seems to me that the hackle takes on the color of the last one that you wrap. That it, it's a little more brownish if you wrap the brown last, and a little more gray grizzly. Oh, I never if you wrap paid any attention to that. I just kind of have huh. gotten that impression when I tie. And of course, here's a chance too. You can also use the one feather Adams fly. They call it the Cree. Sure, with the Cree feather. And just mm -hmm. use one. Now but, I've wrapped uh, a little bit behind. Now I'm coming forward. Now don't forget, you got to leave yourself plenty of headroom here because you got one more hackle yeah. coming forward. And I think the reason for what I've just said is now when you put the gri grizzly on, the first wraps will go behind the brown. Yes. And when you finish in front, the last wraps that will go in be. front. Mm -hmm. So it just tends to give a little that different impression. Be. I don't think it's significant at all, but uh, I'm just a vast font of insignificant facts. Well, <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> now I'm, I'm just zigzagging that uh, grizzly hackle through. That's a good looking fly. And drawing. finished it up in front. Get rid of that hackle. And then just build a nice, neat little head. Do you have any special trick when you are going to bind down the hackle that you get it clean and don't have odd fibers sticking forward? Because I notice when you do it, it look at that, it's always so clean. Well, and, uh, when I grab all of it to move it aside, uh -huh. I grab it with my thumbnail and first finger uh -huh. and then wrap in front. No, I'm, I'm talking about when you actually tie the hackle down and cut it. Oh, no. No, I just try to leave myself yeah. enough headroom there yeah. where I know it's going to work. Because a lot of people will tie and they'll end up with some of those hackle fibers sticking bound through. down, sticking out the head, and then they got to try to trim them no. off. Well, sometimes mine will bind down, but when I run my thumbnail in there to move it all uh -huh. to the rear, sometimes uh -huh. that will drag it forward. And there's a grizzly wolf with a little drop of head cement on it. I'll Ooh. rotate it around. One little trick that uh, works for me sometimes is if that hackle isn't laid back nice and tight, I'll take a half hitch tool and push the hackle push back, back with the half mm -hmm. hitch and then run a half yeah. hitch up there. And that'll kind of correct some problems. Well, there's and a I, grizzly uh, wolf. I've had a lot of experience correcting problems. Oh, I've <laughs> <laughs> it has a, a uh, moose body, a hair for the tail, yellow poly for the body. The wing is brown calf tail. The hackle is brown and grizzly mix. Beautiful fly. Real good rough water fly. Mm -hmm. You ever used that in, oh, in sure. real rough water? Well, now we're going to tie a variation, a new variation, at least it's new to me, on the old Mickey Finn. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but I tend to think of the Mickey Finn as more of an Eastern pattern because mm. that's where I learned to fish it. I think of it as a Canadian and, pattern. And uh, you don't hear as many people using it in the West that I know mm -hmm. of, but I learned mm -hmm. to fish it in the East, and I tend to think of it as, a, as that way. But this is a pattern that will be dynamite, I think, all over. <laughs> and you promised to show me a little trick with the eyes well, with the, okay. that I yeah, haven't I seen before. So right. watch closely because I think you'll learn something uh, very helpful uh, <laughs> all about right. these stick-on eyes. Soft tackle Mickey Finn. I'll use a 6 aught black tying thread. The only reason I'm using 6 is to build up that head faster. I could even use a 3. Mm -hmm. The hackle will be red and yellow marabou. For the front, I've got a, a widget flank feather for the front. There will be uh, pearl crystal flash in the tail. And then the eyes, and the little trick that you've never seen before is how we're going to attach those stick-on eyes so you never know it's there. I have and a, what are you going to use to do that? Oh, it's a 10 aught. I think it's a monofilament, monofilament is what it is. Uh, it looks like it's a monofilament. It's clear, or they may mm -hmm. sell it as smoke-colored. Can't tell you that. But, uh, but I have a standard 4 aught. Uh, four aught, a standard number four streamer hook in the vise. I'll dress it again, like always. And you know, I, I'm becoming more and more of the opinion that anything that soft hackle will just work like a dream. I've yeah. got to think yeah. it will. Well, now the the standard Mickey Finn has a s flat silver tinsel body. Does mm -hmm. this n not no. have anything on no. the hook at all? Has nothing on the hook. I'm going to tie in one feather opposite myself and that might be a little long so I'll just drag it through 
Well, I'm sorry, I kind of stepped on you there. That's a what kind of a, that's a widgeon feather? No, no, this is a yellow marabou. Oh, I oh I see. I couldn't see it. Yellow again marabou. There, from my view here. And then I'm going to tie another one on the other side and get rid of all that stuff. And I want it about the same length. I'm going to go ahead and just tie it down and then pull it through till it comes up to the right length. Now there's my tail, almost all my tail. I'm going to take a few strands of this pearl crystal flash. And again, like we've said many times, I think people sometimes have a tendency to want to overdo this, Way although much, yeah. on a fly like this, I don't think it's going to make any difference. I think it will work very well. I'm just going to tie it about in the middle, cinch it down. I'm going to leave one side running out on mine. I'll tie the other side down where it's going out the other way, then pull them both together and clip them off straight. And there's the uh, look flash at, going look through at, it. That's so nice. Then I take another marabou feather, strip that off the bottom. Well, it adds a little sparkle to it. Oh, it really does. Then I'm going to take this tip separate it out. This is what they call blood marabou. It has the stem running all the way through it. The only thing I've done is just trim most of that fiber off so I just leave a little tag to start tying on. And when I tie this fly, I just cannot wrap it with my fingers. With this one I always use hackle pliers, always. You've also see I've left quite a little bit of room here. This will cover that. Will not make any difference at all. And this come forward. Each time I go around, I'm going to brush that marabou feather to the rear. Well, and that that's in itself is a unique way to use marabou because uh, most people tie it on in clumps mm -hmm. and don't wrap it. Mm -hmm. But with this hackle yeah. or the stem in there, you can yeah. use it just like oh, yeah. a hackle. And I think uh, I think the viewers are going to like the effect that it gives when it's all done. It's having a tendency to want to wrap around itself, but that's very easy to correct. <clears throat> now, I run out of feather. I thought I could do it with one, but I need just a little bit more because I think I want more of this. Turn my hackle pliers away. I want more of this yellow than I do of the red. It seems to me that the standard for the original Mickey Finn is two thirds, I mean, uh, a double layer on the bottom and then a single layer of red and a single layer of oh, yeah. on top. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so again, I'll do the same thing. I'm not going to take as many wraps with this one. I just ran out just a little bit quicker than I wanted to. And again, I'm going to trim just this little section where I can have a tip to tie in. That's all I want. I guess an easy way to have said that was that the bottom should be twice as wide as the middle and the top. That would have been an easy way to say it. <laughs> Whatever. It's got more red in it than yellow. No, more yellow. Or more yellow, I mean, yeah. than red, yes. Yeah. Now, again, I'm just going to keep going forward. And this soft marabou, it will just work in that current. This has got to be one of the neatest variations of a, marabou, of a uh, Mickey Finn oh, I yeah. have ever seen. Well, and I, I really like the idea of wrapping that marabou. Mm -hmm. You've never seen that before? I, I've never done it. And... Uh, I, I just haven't had occasion to, but you can just see that on mm -hmm. steelhead flies. Oh yes, or on uh, almost anything where you and, want. Action. And on some uh, later shows, we will do some steelhead flies. I'll do some with you. Yeah, I, I knew you were going to. This and red one, uh, I'm going to do the same way. Of course, you could do it in black down. and make a great leech. Sure could. Sure could. Uh, a lot of bass flies you could do it with. Tie that red in place, and I don't want to get up too close to the head or the eye, because we're going to put a big head on there and a set of eyes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> At least that's the plan. Well, I hope it works out for you. <laughs> <laughs> now you can see it's really starting to take shape as that red flows back over. Now, one difference between this and the regular Mickey Finn, this really won't end up as a stripe in the middle. No. But it'll end no. up flowing together. The same, yes. Yeah. Showing the basically colors the will same. be there, mm -hmm. but it won't be in, in strips. No. Now, I'll stop right there. And this is where 
I said if you were using a 3 aught thread, it would build it up a whole lot quicker mm -hmm. than this 6 well. Now you're going to put some more yellow on there, are you? <clears throat> nope. Is that it? Nope. Right now I'm going to put just this widgeon feather. Ah. A lot of times if you don't have some kind of a feather here in the front, and this gives a different coloration, but what will happen is as you cast that fly, it will have a tendency to crawl around the, the leader, that soft marabou. But this stiffer feather will hold it away. Well, that's another good tip. Then just wrap this widgeon, and it gives a really good coloration. Mm -hmm. And I don't want a whole lot of it on there at all. Well, you could use mallard flank too. You could or use any of that. I just like the way this coloration well, is. Well, the on widgeon is there's some nice long things and colors. <clears throat> Fold it all back and build a head. Now this is where it takes a little bit of time to wrap it all together. Just keep building that head on there. And this then will make quite a nice looking streamer with that oh, head. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, well, wait till you see what he does with the eye. That's going to be slick. Well. A lot of people will put that stick-on eye on, and, and who knows how you're going to glue it together, yeah. and sometimes huh. they will come apart. And I have never had real good luck with the stick-on eyes because they tend to come off for mm -hmm. me. Uh, if I use the uh, eyes with the separate pupil and the bulging bug eyes or doll eyes, uh, then I put them on with the, uh, oh, with that shoe stuff, mm -hmm. the, the uh, heavy stuff. And I'm not going to fight on. that on anymore. I think that might be big enough to uh, uh, at least show what we're wanting. It might so be a little you, small. It's a little small, but now you, uh, <coughs> for those eyes, but now you... Now all I have is, is just the doll, or the stick-on eye. Uh -huh. I'll put it on my side. This is, that head's going to be a little small. Yeah, it is small. But we'll make it work. And then one on the other side. Something else you could do too there is put some dubbing on it mm -hmm. to build that up a little quicker. Stick it in place. Now you can see that it's a little bit, my head's not big enough to roll that all the way around. So if I can, I'm going to just trim a little bit that off the top. I think at home when you have time, I would just oh. use a bigger thread yep. and make Wrap a bigger head. Now I'm going to take some of this. Uh, Ten ought, if I can get it started on there. Well, that would be hard for the viewers to see because, of course, it's clear. It's clear. And you would think that by wrapping it over that eye that it would totally ruin the appearance of it, but it does not. Well, when you put the head cement on it, it kind it of disappears. It disappears. Yeah. totally disappears. At least that's what you've told me. I haven't seen it done. It does. Done. Yeah. It does. <clears throat> and then again, we apologize because that head's not quite big enough, but this will give the appearance of what you want it to see. Hey, this is live television. They get what no. they, they get. What no. they get. With, <laughs> with that several wraps on there, I'm just going to go ahead and head cement, I mean uh, whip finish this mono, same way. But then as you, as you take head cement and put over the top of that, all of those clear wraps will totally disappear. You have nothing showing now but just the, uh, just the eyes. Uh -huh. Well, that's a great trick because I like the eyes, but I haven't liked the results mm -hmm. using them because they don't mm -hmm. stick to a lot of things. And that's not quite, like I say, that's not a big enough head for that fly. But it looks but good. It'll, it'll give the definite uh, oh, yeah. Mickey Finn coloration and with the eyes on it. Well, it looks like a yellow head with black eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. But that fly has nothing in it except yellow, mar yellow and red marabou. It has pearl crystal flash, a widgeon flank feather, and the yellow and black eyes. Well, we're going to finish up tonight with a panfish fly. And I don't know why they call it this. They call it a palmered gnat, and it has about as much to do with a gnat as anything I ever saw. Mm -hmm. But that's what it's called, and it's uh, for bluegill and crappie and any panfish. And mm -hmm. Let's see how it's done. All right, I'll use a black 6 aught tying thread. This one has a little bead on the front, of which I've already put on the hook. It'll have the white round rubber legs, 
The body will be with black yarn and then a black hackle palmered through it. Now I already have a scud hook in the vise with the bead on it. I'm going to go ahead and just start wrapping right up here at the bead and then start to the rear. Now I've taken that round rubber leg and already gotten some of them started and I'm just going to tie them on. I don't care what the length is on it at all at this point and I'm just going to wrap toward the rear of the well, scud This will be like a tail. Mm -hmm. But again, I, it's called a palmer gnat, but I have no idea where that name came from. Now those are far too long, so I'll just come in here and trim them. This is Wouldn't a size there, about 12. Eight of them you said? Yeah, about eight or nine. And I don't want to trim them too short because you can't hardly tie them back on again. Then I'll take a piece of this uh, yarn for the body, tie it in place. And I'm going to run up to the front and get all that bound down. Well, that's the kind of panfish fly I like. It's all quick little, and easy to tie. And those rubber legs, they just oh, kick rubber like legs crazy. Are but, uh, now this hackle, I'm going to tie in again by the tip. No, you could tie that as a yellow fly, sure. as a white fly. Sure. Uh, white, I would think, would be great for crappies as is yellow. Well, I think that's what those white legs, too. I sure. mean, I know crappies oh, yeah. just love anything that's yeah. uh, that's white and tie that body material off then I'll get my hackle pliers around that hackle oh, I hate to put a lot of time in tying a panfish fly oh yeah it but, doesn't but that is so quick and easy and uh, and it's tied working. on a little scud hook too which yeah. I, I don't understand the reasoning behind well, that. I think it keeps the body short but still gives it a wide be. gap for mm -hmm. hooking. Could be. Yeah. And there's the the uh, what always amazes me is with panfish, especially little bluegills and things, they seem to have such a small mouth that they can take a <laughs> cork popper that's <laughs> the same diameter as their mouth and just suck it in. Suck it in real uh, quick. So uh, that's always surprising to me. And there I'll build just a little head behind that. Oh, you know, isn't that nice? Uh, Silver bead. Oh, got a piece of that wrapped in. Turn now, I off. suppose when you fish that, probably you'd want to let it sink and then strip it in short strips yeah. and make those legs work. And it's gonna it's gonna dive pretty good oh, anyway yeah. with that silver bead on it. Well, that's where I like to wait near the front because mm -hmm. then when you do strip it, you get a wiggly up and down motion. Oh, and with those uh, rear legs yeah. as that's diving, it's gonna be yeah. just kicking all the way And of course, you could tie down. it with all black legs. Sure, you could. Or any color combinations you want, a gold bead or silver mm -hmm. bead or. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I think that's. Well, That's there's a palmer a gnat, yeah. Fly. Now, you, you could even go in and cut those legs a little shorter. I'm going to no, leave them I like just them like long. that. I want I'd them like to vibrate. a little bit longer I, myself. Yeah, you, you could even tie them longer. But that's nothing more than, than round rubber legs for the round rubber legs. Ah. <laughs> uh, it's got <laughs> black wool yarn, palmered uh, black hackle, and a silver bead. I think a gold bead would also work on yep. that front. Well, let's see. Tonight we started out tying the uh, grizzly wool. We tied the soft hackle marabou, uh, Mickey the Finn, yeah, and, and the now Palmer, the Palmer Nat. Palmer Nat. So uh, check us next time and we'll have some more good stuff for you. Thanks for watching. Dave and Leroy have produced two 100-minute videos covering basic trout fly selection and tying for the western and eastern United States. For basic western and eastern flies videos, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website at publictelevision.org. Cost of each video is $16.95 or get both for just $31.95 plus shipping and handling. You can also order the programs from this series. Each videotape includes three programs for just $22.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit us at our website, publictelevision.org.
For more information on this series, please visit our website, publictelevision.org.